Santa Fe. It's the oldest capital city in the United States. So from 1610 to 1821, it was part of Spain. And there was just a 12 year hiatus where the Pueblo people took over. And for a while we were part of Mexico when Mexico established its independence. But then in 1846, this became US territory. And it has the oldest church, supposedly the oldest house. Although, I mean, you can go back to some of the Pueblos and say they probably really have the oldest houses. But I guess the oldest house from the times of colonial establishment. The style that you see, this is a historic neighborhood, so we're in the historic district. And back in the early 20th century, the city of Santa Fe codified the st this style, which is called Spanish Pueblo Revival. And it comes from the original Spanish settlers, as well as the indigenous people, the Pueblo Indians. And they built their building with mud, basically. So the Spanish used adobe brick, the Pueblo Indians used volcanic rock and plastered over the whole thing with mud, but they both basically did the same types of buildings here. So in the early 20th century, the city of Santa Fe realized that this is what made Santa Fe special. So they codified that style as part of the historic district and any new buildings had to conform to that style. You came here, was it empty lot? It was, yes, well, pretty much. There was an old dilapidated uh, remaining shack, I would say. There had been an adobe, real adobe building, but it was in such bad shape that there was no salvaging it. But it was priced right, that was the main thing, it was priced right. And my husband loves a challenge. The site actually had a lot of issues. There was an existing house, it was not permitted, it was really old. It was almost literally crumbling. The lot kind of sat in this very unusual corner where the road winds around it and goes up the hill. So the lot sits more or less in the depression. And when I, I remember the first time I came to the lot, looking from the outside, oh, I felt, oh, this, this was really bad feng shui. We're standing on the roof and we're really at the level of the road. So, as you can see, the cyclist, he's riding up the hill. So, when you're walking on the road, you really look down at a house. And so, the privacy issue was something I really felt strongly I had to mitigate. That we needed to feel secure in the house. And Ju is the gardener. But it's very difficult to keep any kind of lush kind of gardening going in Santa Fe. So. But these are mostly native plants. This is an Apache plume. The site at some point in its history was kind of cut, leaving a hillside gash that was never stabilized. So over the years, there was a lot of erosion. Yeah, so he terraced this whole, you know, this was nothing. This, he did all of this. It's pretty impressive. But the only way to be able to build this close to a, I mean, this deep, right? Yeah. yeah, it's because this is the lot. I mean, the lot ends there at the street, so we don't have yeah. much to work with. But this works out nicely, creates a nice little barrier. You feel kind of cocooned in here. Yeah, yeah. it is. We are, we are cocooned. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Wow. The first time I came to the lot, it didn't feel good at all. But when I walked into the site, somehow I felt like it could work. There could be a nice nestled feeling within the site to build a house. It's starting to get... This is huge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is, yeah, this is the kitchen, the dining, and the living area. Yeah, we kind of like having everything in one big space here. So inside is a lot more modern. So I would think of it as like maybe rustic modern, maybe. But then the outside is conforms to the historic code. This is not an adobe house. There were a few reasons for it. I mean, I thought about using adobe, but our modern building performance standards, adobe doesn't really lend well to it. 
Adobe really is not a very good insulating material. It does well if you have a passive building. If you were building in a very rudimentary way, Adobe can be a, a fantastic material. But unfortunately, our modern green coat standards require a certain amount of insulating properties of wall assemblies and 10 inch Adobe wall only gives an R value of, I believe, like 4, R4. When your wall, you need to have an, a, a minimum of R19. So that means that I need five of these bricks. So I need a four foot thick wall to get the R value that is needed for our modern green coat standards, which is what many cities require. So what happens when people want Adobe is that they have to insulate the outside, the inside, or in between Adobe brick widths. So that poses a few problems for us. One, it becomes cost prohibitive. There is so much material and a lot of labor. The other is that it is space prohibitive. Our site really was very small. And even having a masonry wall with stucco and plaster on both sides, you know, you'll end up probably having like a 12 inch wall. It starts really limiting your interior space. In the end, I opted to simply go with conventional frame construction, but with spray foam on the outside, as well as insulation within the wall cavity. And that gives me a fantastic wall performance. I think it really shows we don't have air conditioning in the house. So the nice thing about Santa Fe is you don't need air conditioning. If you build right, you know, now if we built like facing the sun and had, you know, then we might need air conditioning, but um, yeah, but if you build right, you don't need it. And we get just the, a nice cross ventilation. You know, we're very comfortable here. It's very comfortable. But Adobe buildings have a wonderful feeling to it. It smells different. The sound is different on the inside and obviously it would have been nice to be able to afford to build an adobe house. So this floor, this is a mud floor, an adobe floor. So inside these spaces I poured concrete but in all these living areas I used the mud floor and it was a little bit of an experiment. It is made with uh, clay, sand straw and water it was a little bit definitely a little bit of a risk doing a mud floor we weren't too experienced with it but i decided to go ahead and i'm, I'm really happy with it actually with the way it came out it's not as hard as concrete so it's really nice on your feet it's got this slightly leathery feel so we actually kept a real adobe floor and Ju, he spent a lot of time on his hands and knees because this takes a lot of linseed oil. In the old days they used ox blood to seal it. Not just as a coloring but I think it, it helps to harden the adobe. But I joke that you know a lot of my own blood went into this. <laughs> you know. So it's um, the mud floor are in the in the public areas. In the rooms um, they're concrete, they're concrete slabs in the rooms or anywhere inside these walls. So we're basically, I kind of see the mud as something a bit more natural and it exists outside of these walls. In terms of the finishes of the house, something I was quite adamant was minimizing the amount of paint. I always liked surfaces and this is partly due to laziness also that I want to have a house that looks good if it's dirty and looks good imperfect. This is a stucco base, you know, it's a, it's a cement product and it's what goes underneath the exterior stucco. As you can see, it's far from perfect, but I think it's perfect for our lifestyle. We don't have to paint it and it's really soothing to my eyes and um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just a really nice texture. So uh, inside these walls would be concrete, 
for example, this is my home office. And so, so it transitions from a mud to concrete in here. So it's very much a working office. I've got all, all my books here. Again, these shelves used from the excess wood that we, that we got. These wood, all these wood strips, he has little bits and pieces here with wood strips. And you saw the garage had that. This is made of a lot of recycled wood that, that's all over the house. You know, we clad it and the wood came from everywhere. This is all, you know, old wood from various sources as well as, you know, from our old house, we had some old lawn furniture that we threw away, but I salvaged some of the wood, so some lawn furniture <laughs> pieces uh, are in here. This house really was like a 25% DIY. A lot of the details and the finishing, I had to self-perform. Here's another, here's another wall that we used the recycled wood to clad. I'm no carpenter. You know, I grew up in the city. I never had tools. But, you know, I kind of felt like this was a fun way to just try different things, build simple pieces of furniture. This is a screen door in front of our front door. The reason for a screen door, again, is to provide some privacy from people that walk up and down the streets. And this actually works perfectly. So this provides shade in the morning. So we get sun over here. And, uh, and throughout the day, it's really perfect. But then in the evenings, we can open it up. And of course, um, we open it up for guests. For some reason, we overboard the roof rafters, uh, these 2x12s. They're rough sawn lumber. So I decided eventually to use it everywhere else. Instead of having cabinetry, we use it for these shelves, we use it. I use it for this butcher block counter. This is kind of finished in basically butcher block uh, oil, uh, but everything else is black. And rather than using stain, you know, which has uh, off-gassing and so on and so forth. What I did was a mixture of vinegar, rusted metal and water. It's like magic when you spray it onto especially darker woods. This, all of this is from that kind of vinegar stain that he created. Yeah, we, we spent a lot of time staining all of that. It, it felt natural, which is nice. I like you now avoid all the chemical stuff as much as we can, you know. And then we have pantries and stuff here. But I like the open shelves. It helps us keep it, you know, we don't turn it into a junk, junky uh, cabinets everywhere, so. Our dining table, so I made this dining, or rather I designed this dining table because I didn't, I only had rudimentary kind of, you know, carp carpentry skills as well as uh, equipment. So with uh, three, uh, three or four of these, uh, these boards here, you know, I, uh, I had a carpenter join it together and then I finished it. And the, the legs are, again, just two pieces of, you know, more of this wood. So this is our daughter. She's taken to this spot here. She likes to work here. The way I planned the house was that the house is made up of various blocks. They're almost individual blocks and they're the living spaces. And whatever's in between the living spaces, as in the sleeping areas mostly, are the more public areas. Come on back. I have to say, this is kind of a catch-all room. So <laughs> it's kind of like stuff that, you know, the piano room, we have a piano. And then uh, Jew's guitar, and we got cat stuff here, and <laughs> all kinds of... So there is a mass over here, and there is a mass over there. So this area here is just a little extra space here. So then these two rooms are... So this is a master, this is Sienna's room. Her room is actually the smallest in terms of the footprint, but it's, you know, to give it a sense, a real sense of space, you know, she's got the tallest room and it sits on the part of the site where the road is the highest. 
So I wanted it to be the highest you know, mass on the site. We built this, you know, a couple of summers ago. We built a loft and we built one of these space saving staircases that the cats go up and down easily. So she's got like a mattress here, lovely, like a futon. Then there's this little cubby to go through here. There's a whole room, you know, like I can throw things over here. And behind this wall is actually, she's got a bathroom and a closet back here. This wood here, well, you guessed it, you know, it's whatever I could find just to create a, a safety barrier rather than just building a railing. Gosh, as a kid, I would have loved this room to have all this, uh, all these high spaces, you know, little windows that kind of poke in and out. I wanted to minimize the amount of paint. I feel like this wall, rather than having a painted wall, just gives uh, the most soothing kind of uh, color and you know texture for us. This is a, in a part of the house that stays the coolest. It's on the north side. And so it really is a nice kind of end of the day uh, room you know, to be in. The bathroom is just open. We have a, our closet in here. We have our, our toilet room and more of that stuff. And then in here is our, our bathing area. We have our shower. We have a very nice big shower area here in the bathtub. You know, we get lots of light through these windows. And again, you know, just no cabinetry, it's just a shelf. These shelves here, with a sink that sits on the shelf. The skylights really add a lot, you know, especially in the day. And you'll see like shapes going across the floor during the day, you know, when the sun streams through the skylights. We have a little corner here that has really beautiful light coming down. We have a powder room, again with the recycled wood, and a mirror that I wanted to go from edge to edge. A lot of people have tried to walk through that mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange thing. This counter here again is made from the extras that we had. I milled this shelf with a little bit of a catch edge here. And so, and so far this little mirror has worked for us. And this is a nice place to go to just look at the stars, you know. So at night, we do get great stars. You know what's really neat is you can see yeah. how this color is the same as the earth. Yeah, I mean, that is the actual color of the earth here. So the traditional Pueblo Indians made it out of the earth, yeah. and uh, as did the Spanish when they came here. Yeah. So these are called canales. They're to drain the water. They were traditionally made out of ponderosa pine trunks, and so they're usually round, or cylindrical, rather. But they're practical, too. So the, these are our rain barrels. We collect, uh, we collect some rainwater, both on this side of the house and on the other side. The water comes down here, and these barrels are all linked. So I've got about 300 gallons here. You know, I don't have an irrigation system, so I carry buckets. <laughs> There's an ad hoc fence that I built. <laughs> it sags once in a while, but you know, if you've been in Santa Fe long enough, this is kind of how things are built a lot of the times. This is made of uh, cedar. You know, they built here in Santa Fe, they use uh, different kinds of wood, but the one that lasts the longest is the cedar. And I decided to put the entrance kind of not not facing the road because you know this road can get a little busy this is where that big cut in the hill was and we actually filled it in we actually filled it in and we had to build a couple of these big retaining walls to stabilize the hill here in the southwest it doesn't rain very much but when it does it can really pour flash floods occur very quickly 
So I've got a lot of foundation drains behind these walls and also over here just to make sure that the water runs away. Here's a retention pond and this is how we deal with some of the rainwater runoff. If it ever floods, you're supposed to collect water within your lot. You can't just let it flow through your neighbors. So this helps to control some of the water runoff. Here is another one of those retention ponds. And this pond here collects water from foundation drains behind these walls here and also from the entrance. So the pipes come in here and, and I have seen it with six inches of water. And so it does, it does fill up. You know, all the plants uh, were planted over the last four, four, uh, past five years. They're pretty much self-sustaining. They hardly need any water. So I just decided that these two bottom tiers here were where we were going to put ornamental plants and up above, it just let it go a while. You know, just whatever grows, just let it grow. So we actually have a couple of uh, cacti up there. There's a prickly pear that started growing on its own. We had so much leftover wood, so I built this swing. You know, it works pretty well. The cushion came from an old piece of IKEA furniture. <laughs> it's quite a coincidence that it, you know, it fit just right. This little sitting area, and then we have an outdoor fireplace. And, uh, Another project. This is a coffee table that I put together. You know, just some pine boards and then I stained it. I wanted this coffee table to kind of bend around to be in relationship with the fireplace. But we keep moving things. But we, oh yeah, we keep moving things around, so, you know. So, you know, we even have a fireplace outside, so, you know, we can just enjoy ourselves in the fall or or early or in the spring when it's still kind of cold outside. I was happy where we lived before. So when he decided to build this, as he built it, as it was getting built, I fell in. He wanted to move in. He said that he wanted to move in. I was like, no, 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 no. <sighs> but as it was being built, I fell in love with it. Now I love it. You know, I can't imagine being anywhere else. So I, I feel like it's truly because he built it from scratch. So it's really his vision, you know? And so I really appreciate it. Now, once you put your blood and sweat into something, you really start to appreciate it. 